Hello, everybody, and welcome to more Doki Doki Literature Club Plus. Today, we are going to be finishing out the uh, next portion of our side stories with the next of them known as Reflection, parts one and two. Um, this is obviously Monica and Yuri centric, two of my favorite ghouls. Very excited about that. Uh, for better or for worse, Yuri has not seen a lot of attention this go around, but you know what? That's fine. It's fine. I'm not mad. A little, but now we're going to go ahead and uh, see what's going on here with the first of the two reflection part one. Here we go. Am I bothering you? Hmm? No. Okay, just checking. It's hard to tell since you always look so into it when you're reading. It makes me scared to interrupt. Well, it's within my expectations to be interrupted when I read here. It's mainly when I'm by myself that I don't like it. Hmm, that makes sense. I guess if you're here in the first place, then you're more ready to socialize, even if it takes a little bit of prodding. It's not so bad to be social if I let others do the work, so it could be healthy to put myself in a social environment every now and then. It's mostly difficult when I don't know anyone, or there are too many people, or everyone's being too silly for me to keep up with. Yuri glances across the room at Sayori and Natsuki. Sayori has her head cocked back and her mouth open, trying to catch pieces of a cookie that Natsuki is lobbing in the air, but the pieces kept bouncing off her face and hitting the floor. Maybe I should say something. No need, they just ran out of cookie. What a waste. They've really become good friends, haven't they? I'm happy. Sayori seems particularly good at making that happen. But the two of them are both on the energetic side, so I suppose it works out well. Yeah, come to think of it, you and I haven't had many chances to talk one-on-one, -on -one, have we? Though that may be partially my fault, since I'm supposed to be the one engaging club members. Not at all. I've probably formed a habit of drawing minimal attention to myself. <laughs> the responsibility is equally on me, at least to display some openness to engage. Well, what about during times like lunch? Do you meet up with friends? I... I just read. Oh. But I like it that way. It feels nice to be carried off again after a morning of classes. Hmm. Do you always read fantasy? Oh, not always. I suppose it's all I've read recently, but only because I'm in the middle of this series. There are still two more books after this one. I guess those long books suit you well, since you spend so much time reading. Well, fantasy may be my favorite, but after that, I'm more or less indiscriminate to genres. I'll read anything with depth and maturity. Oh, yeah? Even, like, romance? Well, there are a lot of books that have elements of romance in them. Oh, come on, Yuri, you know what I mean. Monica lowers her voice. It's a guilty pleasure of mine, so I won't tell you one if you do, too. Maybe more when I was in middle school. I mean, I was really lonely and people were mean to me a lot, so I just, it kind of felt like, no, please don't make me think about the past. <laughs> Sorry, I just got super curious. You know, we should totally pick out a ra romance novel to read, that'd be so much fun. Absolutely not. Really? Even if it was just between us? Try asking someone who has no shame, like Natsuki. Ouch. Ah, sorry, I, I swear I didn't mean that. Well, I guess it was my fault for pressuring you. I'm like that for things in my past, too. You know, things I feel too embarrassed to re-experience. There's nothing wrong with growing out of things that happen to everyone. I apologize if you heard that. That's the sound of my cat. Foco, what are you doing? Crazy butthead. <laughs> it happens to everyone. For instance, Natsuki's interest in manga remind me quite a bit of how intense I used to be about my own interests. It makes me think that she'll likely grow out of it, too. Hey, were you talking about me? Um, no, we were just... Oh, we were just talking about how our interests have changed over the years. When did you get into manga, Natsuki? Hmm, like a couple years ago, I guess. I was already sort of into it before that, but I hadn't gotten really hard... It wasn't really going hard until then. Oh, yeah? What was inspired you to get more into it? I don't know. I guess... I guess, uh, let me think. It was after I discovered a series I really liked. Yeah, I was just, like, really fed up with a lot of things. And I got super into this one series that I really related to. 
I guess I had an edgy face where I just hated everyone around me. I wanted to be my, by myself. <laughs> hey, kind of like Yuri. Monica! Uh, sorry. That's completely wrong, so... It's so cool that you both really found your thing. They're almost like opposites, but it sounds like they really helped you through hard times. You know it. Mm. Wow, what the heck? Is that book even bigger than the last one you were reading? Ah, uh, um... It's technically slightly longer, but not by much. How high do you think it would go if I stacked up the whole series? Natsuka seems to estimate by holding her hand high above her head, sizing up an imaginary stack. I should get one of those mangas that's like 50 volumes long so I can say I've read more than you. <laughs> not that I have the money for that. Please, that would hardly count when your books only have a few words per page. I know, I was just joking. I could never actually read books like yours. It's too boring for me. Yuri shoots a glare at Natsuki. It's not boring. Chill, I said for me, not for you. I can have my own opinion. I just think it's too convoluted. Sayori, are those from the floor? Hmm. <laughs> Gross. Also, wash your hands before touching any of my books. But my hands aren't dirty. Just do it. The wheels are there, even if you can't see them. Fine. Sari trots out the door and Natsuki follows. Yuri, you look a little upset. What kind of nerve does she have to call my hobby boring? Well, she did correct herself. Hardly. She was so condescending. I don't mind if she thinks it's not for her. I already understand that it's not for everyone. But she knows how much these mean to me. So how about just leaving me alone instead of needlessly telling me that the things you hate about it? I'm sorry, Yuri. You may be right. This won't be the last time people have strong feelings about what they like and don't like. Especially in a literature club, so I f should figure out how to mediate discussions to keep them positive and constructive. For the record, I've always been impressed by the level of creativity in your books, and also your ability to get through them so quickly. Thank you. Okay, well this is something that I'll have to think about and revisit. I'm sure I can help Natsuki find some common ground with you. Common ground isn't necessary. I just wish to be respected. That then. Either way, I'll do my best. I'm skeptical when it comes to Natsuki. I trust you, Monica. But I'm skeptical. I was about to say, did we reach the end already? Holy shit. Okay, everyone. We have a special club meeting today. As you know, the Literature Club is a place where we get to share things that we're really passionate about. But that also means we should be mindful of how we respond to each other's feelings. I think we have a chance to turn our discussions into positive energy for each other. Aren't you being a little dramatic about this? This is important to me. Well, sorry, I just feel like I'm being accused of something. No, I'm not accusing anyone of anything. I'm sorry if I came off that way. But our conversation yesterday made me reflect on the power of language, and I thought it'd be a good topic for the Literature Club, don't you think? I'm sure we're going to have differences of opinions a lot, so I need to make sure we're prepared to keep a positive atmosphere for the club. If you say so. Sure. The cool thing about language is that it gives us lots of different ways to express the same idea or emotion. We have a lot of control over how we want the other person to feel when we receive our thoughts. This goes for poetry, narratives, casual conversation, basically anything. For example, Sayori, what's your favorite food? Um... I have them organized by category. Should I start with snacks, or do you mean full meals? Should I include breakfast? Oh, jeez. Okay, how about your favorite fruit? That's easy. Cherries. Really? I always thought cherries tasted nasty. What? Cherries are delicious! Well, that's a pretty strong reaction. Well, I just don't understand how someone could think cherries are nasty. How does that make you feel? I don't know. Sad. Defensive, maybe? Yeah, I got defensive. See, the reason you had such a strong reaction wasn't just because I don't like cherries. It's because you felt like your opinion was under attack. But that's weird, right? Something like taste is completely subjective. But when I say something like, I think cherries taste nasty, I'm using objective language. I'm challenging Sarah's reality that cherries are delicious with my own, which is that cherries are nasty. Wait, hold on. How is that objective when you just said it was only your own opinion? It has to do with our, the way our brains interpret our words. You're talking about the reality of the cherries, not your feelings about them. Like, say, Ori, let's rewind for a second and pretend I didn't tell you that I think cherries are nasty. Good. 
So what if instead I was like, I've tried cherries and they're not for me. It's not the kind of flavor I enjoy. Well, that's fine. So you don't call them nasty. Nasty is a nasty word. Okay, so cherries was a weird example, but I think it gets the point across. This time around, instead of talking about the cherries, I just talked about my feelings, and Sari didn't get defensive. So instead of clashing with each other, it's like we received an invitation to talk about our differences. Yuri, you don't need to take notes. I'm not going to quiz you or something. I, I know that. I was just... Mm -hmm. Sorry, I didn't mean to call you out. You can do whatever you'd like. <laughs> but does anyone have any thoughts so far? Yeah, I just feel like I shouldn't have to pull my language through a filter just to protect someone's feelings. Well, you don't have to. The choice is yours on how you want to come across to other people. I'm only suggesting it's a tool to help you turn your differences into positive experience, rather than an argument. Right, Sari? Whatever you say, Cherry Hater. Oh, come on. Sari, I actually like cherries. I was just trying to help demonstrate. What the heck? I've been duped. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sayori. I'll make it up to you later. How about a cherry sundae? You are welcome to dupe me anytime, my beloved president. <laughs> Buying your people's loyalty. How deplorable. Oh, like you would turn down a free sundae, Yuri. You were certainly a fan of those cupcakes I brought in the other week. That was, I mean, I was reading and not keeping track of them. Oh, that's enough. We're getting off topic. So now we have the gist of it. How do we try it with something more relevant to the club? Like manga, right? Let's try to have a productive discussion about differences in opinion. Yuri, do you want to start? Um, well, I'd rather not, no. Well, how come? Well, because I don't see anything productive can come from that. It's just going to start a fight. No, it'll be fine. That's why I'm here to moderate. Let's just have a calm and rational discussion. Yeah, give me a little more credit. I'm not a child, you know. You don't have to coddle my feelings. I always think it's more respectable just to speak your mind. Respectable? Yuri's expression changes at that word. As Monica recalls, being respected was the crux of the matter for Yuri. Well, the point of the exercise isn't exactly like, it's fine. I have nothing against anyone personally. You're entitled to enjoy whatever it is you like. I just perform more depth and nuance in my reading material. I look for stories that are imaginative and sophisticated beyond the surface level. Oh, well, that's just a misunderstanding, then. I thought you were going to say that manga's for children or something. Like, I don't hear enough of that. But there's plenty of deep manga. I'm not clueless about manga. I've read my own fair share when I was younger. What? Are you serious? How come you never told me? Because in my past, that point in my life, and I'd rather not revisit it. I perform more mature things now. Excuse me? Okay, hold on. Can I jump in here? Let's try to keep things subjective. Because if you imply that manga is immature, then aren't you implying that someone is immature for being into it? I... Well, maybe it's immature to judge people for having different tastes than you. Natsuki. Nobody's immature. I've read Natsuki's manga and Yuri's fantasy, and I love them both in their own way. Okay, okay. It's great that you'd like it, but I still find it boring. Boring isn't subjective. Okay, it bores me. That's subjective. But, I mean, the thing about... This is ridiculous. Do you see why I didn't want to participate in this? I knew it was just going to make people upset. I'm not upset. Like I said, I don't care what other people think. But I always got the impression that you secretly looked down upon me, so I'm glad my suspicion was confirmed. That's not true at all. You're making assumptions. You can't blame me for getting defensive when nobody ever has the least bit of respect for the things that I'm into. Also, by the way, can I just interject for a minute? Because the game has been like a thousand miles a minute this go around. Usually we have moments where we can just kind of like take a minute and think about it. Uh, this music is not fitting for this moment. We, we have poetry, uh, poem panic. Like the songs in the soundtrack. Why aren't we using it? Anyway, back, back to the, uh, back to the story. The only thing I look down upon is when people make fun of me for just being myself and trying to mind my own business. What? Have you looked in a mirror? Tell me again about self-respect after calling my interests immature. You can't... Please stop. Please? You don't mean the things you're saying right now. Let's just be friends. I didn't mean for this to happen. Well, it did. So please don't invite yourself to try to solve other people's problems next time, okay? Yuri's piercing words and the whole club room into a choked silence as she gathers her things. She leaves. 
Holy crap. I've never heard her sound like that before. She must be so pissed. Well, you weren't very nice either, so... I was just saying. How did this happen? It's my fault. Yuri wasn't wrong. I shouldn't have tried to moderate a conflict when I know how bad I am with dealing with conflicts. It was a really stupid thing for me to do. It's nobody's fault, and it wasn't stupid. Everyone in the club is a nice person. No one would have expected this. But I guess we're sensitive about the things we really love. Honestly, she kind of brought it upon herself. Like I said, I don't care if you're not in the manga, but if you actually look down on other people for it, that's kind of the point I was trying to make in the first place. It's not about sugarcoating things. It's about recognizing and understanding our differences. Okay, but here's the thing about that. Yuri actually looks down on me. It has nothing to do with her cho work choice or anything like that. So I see what you were trying to do, but I really think the problem here is her, not just the, like, the way she talks to others, right? I mean, Yuri isn't like that. She's a lot sweeter than you're giving her credit for. I'm sure she'll be reflecting on this. I actually think everyone should. It'll be fine. I'll figure something out. Wow, I'm just like saying that instinctively. I'm just setting myself up to cause more problems. That wasn't, this wasn't your fault, Monica. You don't have to beat yourself up over it. If you ask me, it's good that the truth finally came out because I can just move on now. But, mm, it's fine, I promise. Let's just get our mind off this, okay? In fact, it's a good opportunity to read some manga without having to worry about feeding Yuri's superiority complex. Don't be mean. I'll talk, read manga, or whatever you want, but don't be mean to my friends, okay? Sorry. I'm just bitter. Everything will be okay. I mean, I don't have the answers, but at least I know that we're all good people and don't want to hurt each other. This will be a learning experience. Monica says that, but her uneasiness is given away by how much she has to force her, the reassuring tone in her voice. This was bound to happen eventually. Natsuki and Yuri have always engaged with each other, the least out of anyone, and this is the reason. As Yuri and Natsuki proceed to distract themselves with manga, Monica sighs to herself, unable to shake her worried thoughts. Will the club really just have to just come to terms with the fact that some members will be incompatible with each other? Monica desperately doesn't want to admit that, and she knows Sari doesn't either. But for once, a solution doesn't seem to be in sight. That was a lot real fucking quick. Holy shit. God damn. But yeah, no, Reflection Part 1 was actually really good. It went fast. Like, holy shit, that went, like, really fucking quick. But now it's time to move on to Reflection Part 2. Here we go. A new day arrives. Siri arrives at the club room earlier than usual. That is, not late. As she answers, it appears to still be empty. So she sits down at a desk and pulls out a sheet of paper, primed to jot down her thoughts. Siri has made a habit of scribbling her thoughts and feelings onto paper whenever possible, as it tends to serve as her best inspiration for poetry. My heart feels vacant because a ship sailed away. Yo. Yeah! Natsuki! Natsuki points her, pulls her head out from behind the closet door. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. But it would have been a lot more awkward if I didn't say anything. I doubt you want to listen. Me listening on your poetry thing. <laughs> yeah, thanks for realizing that. Should I let you finish up then? Oh no, I wasn't... I mean, I just do it whenever it's convenient. You're not interrupting. Where's Monica, by the way? Oh, she's out in the hallway. Huh? Why? Well... Just in case she runs into Yuri. Sometimes Yuri is too nervous to enter the club room by herself, so... Oh. Jeez. Does Yuri really let things bother her for that long? Game? Game? Apparently it tapped out. My controller stopped working. Sorry, let's try again. She can't control her feelings. For some people, it's really hard to cope when you get, get a bad thought in your head. Maybe you could distract yourself for a little while. Sorry. But as soon as you just... It's, what day is it? But as soon as it's just you and your thoughts again, it comes back. Hmm? I just want to have a normal club meeting. It's a lot easier to pretend like it never happened if we all just ignore it and move on. 
I don't want to be bothered by this. It's so stupid. Her opinion of me doesn't even matter. Besides, it makes me feel really guilty, and I hate that too. It's okay to have feelings. It doesn't make you weak. Let's figure this out together. Fine. Only because you're good at this stuff. Let's try to go over the happy scene. Maybe that will help us understand where your bad feelings are coming from. Well, I was happy the, the way things were before. Before we had that it convention. Or co oh, sorry. Wow. My brain. Before we had that conversation yesterday. What part of the conversation made you upset? Was it Yuri being mean about the manga? Maybe. I doubt it, though. Because my friends and other people make fun of manga all the time. But I just brushed it off and ignore them. But something about it really got to me this time, and I hate that I'm letting that happen. Is it because it came from Yuri? No, why would that matter? I mean, well, well, maybe. I just, I hate that she thinks she's so much better than me just because she likes to pretend to be all sophisticated. Yeah, that's what it is. At least other people decide that they don't like me or manga or whatever. But Yuri acts like she's too good to even give it a chance. I'm sorry. Everyone deserves a chance. Yeah, exactly. Would you give Yuri's books a chance? <laughs> After this, obviously not. What about before this? Well, I would until I got bored, which wouldn't take very long. But if you actually keep an open mind, it's that it's not hard to realize that the story can be deep and meaningful without you being needlessly complicated. I see. But you know, I like Yuri's books. Yeah, but you like manga more, right? Siri shakes her head. I like them both. I like them in different ways, but I like them both. I mean, the manga, it's really honest and fun and easy to just get, let go with. And the fantasy has a lot of interpret and, uh, interpret and uncover. Oh my goodness. Brain. Just cut these bits out. Oh my god. And the fantasy has a lot to interpret and uncover. And it's really rewarding to have some good quiet time together with it. But the most important thing is that both of, well, the both manga and fantasy are true to themselves. So I love them both. And I think there's room for both of them to be in the same club together. And I just feel like maybe, maybe they have more in common than you would think. How do you get along with everyone so well? I always get into fights with people. Like first it was with Monica when I was new to the club. And then it was with you and now it's Yuri. I'm always like, oh, that person's being such a jerk. As if they just realized that and they could at least get along. But nobody else has this problem. I just kept running away from the, the reality that everybody's just a jerk to me because nobody likes me. I don't know why. I don't know what to do about it. I don't know what's wrong with me. I hate it. Natsuki. Sorry, puts a comforting hand on Natsuki's shoulder. You're a wonderful person. You deserve to be loved as much as everyone else. Everyone has different ways they like to communicate, you know? And sometimes that makes it harder for us to understand each other. I think that sometimes, sometimes we get lucky and we make friends who are really good at the same kinds of communication and it feels like you magically connect with them. But other times, even if both people are really nice, it's easy for them to misunderstand each other or to get the communication wrong. It's something that Yuri struggles with a lot too. It could be really hard. It takes a lot of, like, reflection and self-awareness and vulnerability. I'm bad at that one. Vulnerability. I always have to be the strongest. What do you mean? Tell me about that part of you. Well, it sounds stupid, but I'm really used to people being mean to me. Like my friends and I guess my dad. Like when I don't get good grades or even stupid things like my room isn't clean. So what am I going to do? Cry about it? If I let myself get upset, that's just letting them win. I'm better than that. I'm better than all of them. So things always have to be everyone else's fault. It feels like something goes wrong and there's only a tiny hint that might be my fault, then I just get really angry and I find ways to blame everyone else instead. Do you see yourself as better than Yuri? If I said that, then I would just sound really full of myself. No, our thoughts and our feelings are two different things. Even if we don't like our feelings, we have to understand them if we want to learn more about themselves. That's the part of vulnerability, you know? Accepting that we have feelings that we don't like. I... I hate that. 
My feelings make me a bad person because my feelings just want to tell me that I'm so much better than her, that she's a judgmental know-it-all who's stuck in her edgy phase and I'm just a way above that garbage. But I'm terrible for feeling that way. You're not terrible. You are not your feelings. But you are not your feelings. Say that to yourself out loud. Fine. I am not my feelings. The way I like to picture it is that those feelings are like your roommate. You live in the same house and you got to see each other every day. And even if you can ignore each other most of the time, you're going to run into each other every now and then. And it's going to make you feel like poop. So the other option is to get to know each other. You can communicate and learn from each other and maybe even help each other for a be for the better. Does that help you understand? How do you know so much about this stuff? I just have a roommate that can be really hard to get along with called depression. Depression? But you're like the happiest person I know. I am not my feelings. I want to be a good person like you. Oh, you little sweetheart. We're all good people. You and Yuri and Monica. I think Yuri will eventually learn that about you. Natsuki remains silent, feeling a little overwhelmed. Despite Sayori's kind reassurance, a complicated mixture of pain and sadness seems to fill her, as though flowing from a wound inside her. Was it a result of her vulnerability? No. It was as though she was inflicted a wound after becoming vulnerable. It was as though she began to rediscover an old wound, one that cannot simply be bandaged and left alone any longer. Yuri? What are you doing all the way over here? I was looking for you. I... Please don't yell at me! Oh, I'm not going to yell at you. I just wanted to say I'm sorry about what happened yesterday. It was unfair of me to put everyone on the spot like that. Next time, I won't just try to jump in and solve everyone's problems. I guess it's a bad habit of mine. You're not mad at me? I thought you were the one mad at me. I was so awful yesterday. Yuri curls up, recalling the details of the argument. I can't even have a normal conversation without saying something wrong and making everyone upset. Hold on, that's not what happened at all. Let's talk about this, okay? Yuri pauses for a second, then manages to nod. Monica takes a seat next to her on the staircase. I'm having a lot of negative thought patterns, and I can't get away from them. What kind of negative thought patterns? Like everyone hates me. Especially Natsuki. Oh, that's terrible. I don't think Natsuki hates you. How do you know? Well, because... Monica thinks back to the time that she herself found herself in an altercation with Natsuki. How a display of maturity from Monica was enough to convince for Natsuki to reevaluate her own feelings as well. I think I think Natsuki is just naturally defensive. I think she acts when she feels the need to protect herself. But you know, she's not really a bad person. In fact, I think she could be really thoughtful and considerate. She just well, I guess the way it works is that she wants to receive some degree of kindness first before she feels comfortable returning it. Oh. But that means the burden is on me. I don't know how to say things that make people like me. Sorry, it's my teeth. There we go. Every time I open my mouth, I just... Yuri shakes her head at herself and tugs on her hair. It's okay, Yuri. You don't need to beat yourself up. I think anyone would really would like you if they had a chance to get to know you. Well, unfortunately, the opposite is true. That's why I'm not talkative anymore in, anymore in the first place. Because everyone used to think I was weird and talk about me behind my back. That's just what happens when I draw attention to myself. Natsuki even said she found it more respectable when people speak their mind. So I did, and then she hated me anyway. That was enough to confirm my fears. But, but Siri and I like you. We've gotten to know you a lot by now, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yuri doesn't seem to have a response. Hey, what do you think of Natsuki? I, I don't think about her. That's not what I meant, really. I, uh, I just... Uh, I was just wondering if you had an opinion of her. I do. What is it? 
Natsuki seems to bring out the worst in me, and I feel really ashamed of it. I like to think of myself as a fairly sophisticated person. So for someone to just treat me like I'm inferior, despite my tastes, that's just the worst kind of insult coming from someone like her. And it makes me think bad things about her. But everyone else seems to like her, so the only explanation is that it's me who's doing something wrong again. And my feelings about her are wrong. And I'm wrong to get upset over something so childish and inconsequential. No, Yuri, feelings are never wrong. Well, they're not right. That's the thing. Feelings are never right or wrong, you know? They're just, they're just a state of being. We don't always have control over. But that doesn't mean you, they have to control us. I feel like that's something I learned around when I first started the club. We can hate ourselves for feeling a certain way about things, or we can, you know, just acknowledge that they exist and try to understand them better. I could never be mad at you just for feeling a certain way. It's about how you handle them. And I think working through feelings is a great opportunity for teamwork. Yuri wears a dejected expression. You make it sound so easy. You're so mature and so good with people. I feel like such a child in comparison. Oh, Yuri, I'm far from perfect. But these are skill learned skills. They don't come naturally to me either. It's really hard to like reflect on yourself and separate your feelings from your thoughts. I just want to be a good person. Well, I think it takes a good person to get this far. That's not good enough. I want to be able to communicate it to her. Communicate what? How I feel. How it makes me feel frustrated when I'm upset that she's so negative and dismissive of the things that mean so much to me. And how it... How it reminds me of me. Because I know what it's like to feel misunderstood and angry at everyone. I know that telling you you're better than everyone else is just a defense mechanism. We're just people. We're fragile and unstable. But I'm just tired of that getting in the way. I can't stand it when the peace is disturbed like this. Yeah, you can't focus on your reading when the peace is disturbed, right? Because I... Because... The Literature Club should be happy for everyone. Monica looks at Yuri with adoration. I feel like Siri must be rubbing off on me because I really want to hug you now. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable. No, um, I mean, well, if you wanted to, then I wouldn't really mind, so... Monica pulls Yuri into a short embrace. You're so gentle. I love when you communicate your feelings. I feel lucky to get to see that side of you. And I'm sure Natsuki will too. I'm going to write her a letter. Oh, a letter. What a great idea. Just because I'm not good at talking, especially under pressure. I always let my feelings get the best of me and I forget to say all the important things and I say things I don't mean. Well, I think a letter would be wonderful. Such a nice way to communicate. Yuri's face hardens with determination. People don't naturally gravitate towards me like they do for you or Sayori. My personality just isn't suited for that. And I wouldn't want it to be. But something I've learned is that friendship doesn't always just magically appear out of thin, thin air. For instance, I never want to see myself making friends with someone like Sayori. Or opposite in a lot of ways. But I'm friends with her because she put so much effort into understanding me so that we can get along. I think it was the same way with you. You both give me a lot of time and patience. I wonder if... If she feels the same way. Natsuki? Yuri nods. I always thought that if I wanted to make more friends, I had to be somebody that I'm not. That there's a type of person or a magical formula that I have to follow in order to make someone like me. And that's just like me to think that... Always so occupied with myself that I fall, fail to understand other people. Yuri shakes her head. Friendship happens when you think about the other person. When you offer time and effort to understand them, and respect them, and trust that they also want to be a good person. That's what I learned through my observations in the literature club. Observations? Monica's caught by surprise. Yuri's always kept to herself so much that she's unusual, 
to hear her suddenly talk about the club like this. But Yuri smiles to herself. You always let me listen to your thoughts about people. Sayori too. And it makes me happy, because I learn a lot of things. That's so sweet. I had no idea I meant that much to you. Monica never thought much of it, but in the past weeks, Yuri always seemed to be especially attentive when it came to the problems and concerns of others. Always wanting to listen and learn more about her friends in the club. It's true, Sayori and Monica are naturally more comfortable with other people and can more easily work through situations of conflict. But that doesn't make them better people. Everyone has strengths and weaknesses and the capacity to improve. And the first step towards improving oneself is reflection and self-awareness. It's something that Yuri never gave herself enough credit for, but that Monica can recognize as an incredible trait. And with that, her confidence in the club is restored. A very shy girl with long, pretty hair is wandering the bustling lunchtime hallways, her fist pressed into her collarbone. When she finds the Literature Club President's club classroom, she stands at the door, glancing all around, before peering inside. Monica's sitting and chatting with a group of unknown friends. Yeah, as expected, this was a bad idea after all. Suddenly, Monica glances towards the door, making the girl panic and duck out of sight. Before she can regain composure and decide for sure to leave, the classroom door gently opens. Yuri, what a surprise to see you during lunch! Yuri squeaks in response. Please help me. What, is everything okay? Yuri shakes her head. I don't know how to write letters. <laughs> Thank goodness, I thought you were in some kind of emergency. Monica briefly glances over her shoulder at her other friends. Do you want some help? We can go find an empty classroom or something. Is that okay? I feel bad for taking you away from your friends. It's totally fine, I promise. We weren't really doing anything. One sec. Monica trots back into the classroom, says something like, I gotta go, to her friends, and grabs a pen off her desk before turning to Yuri. Okay, let's find somewhere quiet. <laughs> Yuri nods and follows Monica as the two of them set off. How are you today? Huh? Me? Well, yes. <laughs> oh gosh, sorry. I was caught off guard. I'm doing well today. Just tired. I never seem to get enough sleep during the week. How come? Ah, oh, I don't know. I just think I get easily distracted. I get sucked into things and start neglecting the time. Me too. I do that too. <laughs> hey, this classroom is empty. Let's go in here. After peering inside, Monica opens the classroom door and the two of them enter. <laughs> Yuri's moment of relaxation ends. She watches Monica pull two chairs up from to the same desk, then obeys as Monica beckons her to take a seat. She stares down at the empty desk. You nervous? I don't want to do this. We don't... We don't have to. We can go with something else. Yuri shakes her head. It's my chance to do something good. I need to take the initiative. Gosh, you must be really determined. I know how hard it is for you to step out of your comfort zone. I'll be sure to encourage you. Yuri pushes through her anxiety and grabs a handful of lined paper from her notebook. Then she picks up her pen. I love this art, by the way. My personal favorite. Hey, you're left-handed. That's neat. Ah, yeah. Now, I don't have to worry about bumping into your arm. Monica playfully rubs her shoulders with Yuri, I guess Yuri's. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just being silly, I guess. Anyway, how about we start by listing the th different things you want to say about her? Hmm. Yuri thinks. I feel embarrassed all of a sudden. No, that's okay. How about some of the things you said to me yesterday? But never mind, I guess I'll try. Yuri thinks for a moment longer, her tension evident. Then she writes the word, reflection. This is about my reflection on our behavior. The key question is why we act like this towards each other, but have been able to put separately, able to have, oh, wow, oh, oh, I was going to do it so well. Now it's back. The key question is why we act like this towards each other, but have been able to be separately friends with Suri and Monica. That's me. Yes, it is. So, Yuri thinks. I've been able to befriend the two of you because you've taken the time to understand my needs and respect my interests. Mm -hmm. The same goes for Natsuki, too. We started off as pretty hostile towards each other I, because I was worried about getting what I wanted, but she just wanted to be respected more than anything else. Once I stopped making it all about me, she was able to do the same. I want to do that, too. So what kinds of things do you want to do for her? I want... I want to do the same things for her that I like to receive. 
I like it when people respond positively to the things I talk about and not just brush me off. I like it when my feelings are taken seriously. And I like it when you and Siri trust that I want to be a good person, even when I'm not doing a good job at it. Let's write those things down. Okay. Yuri writes some things down. I think the most important thing to remember here is that Natsuki is feeling vulnerable, so we should make sure that the letter puts her first. It's hard when you're feeling hurt, but it never helps just to tell someone all the things that they're doing wrong. I think you first have to make sure that they know you're ready to respect them and listen to them and admit things that you feel you could do better. Then finally, when you ask what you would like in return, how does that sound like for structure? It could be three paragraphs, one for each of those points. I like that. My thoughts were so disorganized. I had no idea how to come up with any structure. You're so amazing thing at these things. No, stop. You've done so much more than I have, you know? You spent so much time reflecting and being open-minded. That's the hardest thing for anyone to do. All I'm doing is helping you put it on a piece of paper. So I think you're the amazing one. Mm -hmm. Monica gives Yuri's hand a quick squeeze. Before, as she lets go, she's caught by surprise when Yuri clears her fingers to hook Monica's hand in place. For a while, they sit like that in silence, save for the occasional scratch of Yuri's pen against the paper. Yesterday, you told me something that I'm thinking about a lot. What was that? The thing about how feelings aren't right or wrong, that they're just a state of being we need to come to terms with. It made me think about how a person's behavior isn't always just how they decide to be. It also made me made up. It's also made up of their past experiences and their insecurities. I think that helps me see other people as actual people rather than as insignificant side characters who are out to get me somehow. Is that how you felt about Natsuki? Yuri nods. But in reality, everyone is always trying their best, and everyone wants to be happy. Monica peers over Yuri's paper, but to her surprise, Yuri pulls it closer, partially covering it with her arm. <laughs> I have to be able to read it to help out, you know. It's okay. My thoughts are a lot more organized now. I have to be able to talk about it, talk to you about it. Now that I'm actually putting it to paper, I realize I'd really prefer others not to read it. Yuri laughs softly to herself, her rare expression. I'm glad I, I've, I'm kind of glad of that, actually. I somehow keep finding ways to butt into this whole thing. I've done enough damage. <laughs> but it's also been so wonderful talking about this. I mean, I always thought you were really smart, but... Yuri smiles. I will always be terrible at these things. People are just so incomprehensible to me. I'll never be able to get the hang of being one. <laughs> but listening to you so much has really helped me make sense of some things. So just don't call it damage, please. Monica gives Yuri a gentle smile. I can't believe I came to this club looking for a fantasy geeks and all I got was real friends who value me. Is that a joke? Of course it is. I still can't tell with you. Sorry. No, I love it. Please never change. As you wish. Yuri glances at the clock. We're almost out of time. Will you be able to finish? Before the end of the day, probably. But I don't want to come to the club the same day Natsuki reads it. I'm too shy. I can give it to her instead if you'd like. Yuri nods. As long as you promise not to read it. Of course, I promise. Thank you. Yuri exhales and the two stand up. I'll message you when it's ready. Monica nods. Good luck. I'm here if you need me. Yuri returns a nod and the two depart. Oh, really? Wow. Okay, so fun fact, actually, I was planning on... uh stopping with obviously reflection part two and i was just going to in batch record self-love but would you look at that it actually left off on the cliffhanger for self-love so you know what mega episode let's knock them both out It's only been one day since Yuri's letter was delivered to Natsuki, with Monica's help. Because Yuri chose not to attend the club meeting that day, she and Natsuki haven't faced each other since. Although it's only lunchtime, Yuri finds herself anxiously counting the hours until she will need to face the outcome of her efforts, whether good or bad. And because she's, but the passing by of students was making her feel even more anxious, Yuri picked out the most secluded spot she could find to spend her lunch. Because this staircase is under maintenance, no student would have any reason for coming here. It's such a relaxing feeling to have a moment of solitude in the middle of the frantic school day. Eep. 
What are you doing here? Um, I just... Yuri grips her book with enough force to wrinkle the pages beneath the pressure of her thumbs. Well, what are you doing here? I just came to get a drink from the vending machine. The other one is, is out of the drink I like. Yuri notices Natsuki fidgeting with a few coins between her fingers. She nods, avoiding eye contact. Natsuki, also looking away, shuffles over to the vending machine. It's so quiet that every one of her movements seems to reverberate through the entire stairwell. After far too long, she finally receives her beverage, which she then fidgets with the pl which she then fidgets with in place of the coins. It's some kind of iced tea. But instead of leaving right away, Natsuki just stands in place. She glances all around her. It's like way too quiet back here. It's creepy. I mean, that's not what I meant, really. I mean, it's really cool that's your thing or whatever. Like, I can see how it suits you. So not because I think you're creepy or something. I didn't mean that either. You know, I'm just going to stop talking. That seems like a good idea. It's okay. Everything is okay. Yuri finds herself attempting some words of comfort after hearing Natsuki stammer herself into dejection. Seemingly in response, Natsuki approaches the base of the staircase and hesitantly sits herself down near Yuri. Well, I can leave if you want. Yuri shakes her head. Natsuki twists the cap of her drink and takes a sip. Despite receiving Yuri's gentle permission, Natsuki doesn't say anything more. Yuri continues to read, or at least pretends to. And the two just sit there. For a long time. The tension seems to fade a little bit as time passes. Even without saying any words, they seems to mean at least something, though it's not clear what that may be. Lunch time lunch ends more quickly than expected. Natsuki is the first to stand up with her empty drink bottle. Are you coming today? To the club. Yuri nods. I'm sorry for being so awkward. I'm really bad at talking about this stuff. I just can't, for some reason. I don't know why. But I want to, eventually. There's no rush. I promise. Thanks. It's the next day. Natsuki appears from around the corner and steps up to the vending machine, glancing at Yuri as she does so. Today, she seems to be holding some kind of book as well. Oh, you're here again. Well, I just came here to read this, because there aren't any people around here. Oh, I thought you didn't like how quiet it was. Well, I don't, but there's no people here. I see. Natsuki sits down. The mood feels much different today than it did yesterday. After yesterday's lunch and the club meeting that followed, Natsuki and Yuri are beginning to feel more relaxed around each other. Although Yuri's letter is still lingering in the back of Natsuki's mind, she continues to detour around it. But it's okay that I'm here? Yeah, I don't care. I mostly just don't feel like dealing with the crap I get from my friends about it. Especially since, like, they'll all just assume I stopped reading manga after I joined the literature club. Not that I'm trying to hide it from them exactly, but I just don't want to come up with it- come up again now after I've waited so long for this new volume to come out. Literally months at this point! You don't have any other friends who are into manga? Not unless online friends count. And Sayori, but that's different because she's not exactly into it, she just likes it, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Honestly, you're lucky the books you're into are at least look like books. You don't have to feel like everyone is constantly judging you by what you're reading. That would be so awful. Especially since I already hate attention so much. Well, it's a good thing I have thick skin, I guess. By the way, I was totally recommending finding some friends online if you haven't already. It would let if you're like me and you have no one to share your hobbies with. Oh, I have online friends. Since middle school, actually. I was especially desperate back then. It's somewhat embarrassing to reminisce about those days. Sometimes I feel like me from a few years ago would be would have benefited from a good smack across the face. Oh, whatever. We're all just stupid kids back then anyway. Some of the fanfics I wrote, thank God I used a pseudonym. But I like it all, all at the time. But I liked it at the time, and I got a lot of fulfillment out of it. And plus, I can look back and say with confidence I've become a better person since then. So I don't think it would change anything. I wonder if a few years from now, we'll think the same thing about our current selves. <laughs> Probably. That doesn't make you uncomfortable? No, of course not. I don't care what other people think of me, especially someone who doesn't even exist yet. Hmm. All right, here. Natsuki raises her hand to her face and forcefully slaps her own cheek. That's me from the future, coming to terms with me right now. Also, 
Ow! I didn't mean to do it that hard. Yuri doesn't seem to react. But then, to Natsuki's surprise, Yuri shyly looks the other way before lifting her arm and doing the same thing to herself, loudly smacking her cheek. She turns red and stares into her lap, but is unable to hide a smile, as though it was a really funny joke. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. I didn't know I had, you had it in you. I... I don't. I don't even know why I did that. Maybe I thought it would be funny. Sorry, I keep distracting you. You said you were looking forward to reading, but I keep going on about all these nonsense. I'll let you get to your reading. Oh, right. Yeah, I guess I'll do that then. The conversation ends quickly, and Natsuki opens her book. <laughs> that was very cute. I like that. The two read silently in the remainder of the lunch hour, but the whole time Yuri feels distracted by a twist of regret over having so abruptly forced the end of their conversation. You're back? Yeah, I'm here to lay low again. Another day passes. During lunchtime, Natsuki finds herself having wandered to the stairwell once more. Hey, did you buy that? Natsuki quickly notices the bottle of iced tea on the staircase where she normally sits. Yuri nods, avoiding eye contact. What, like for me? But you didn't know I was coming here today. What if I didn't show up? Well, I mean, just, I mean, I would have drank it myself, I guess. It was a stupid thing to do. No, it, it wasn't stupid. I just thought, never mind. What I meant to say is thank you. And it's a really nice gesture. It's, it's okay if you don't feel that way. I do. It was the other things that I didn't mean. I swear, please believe me. Mm. Yuri pauses, then nods. Talking is hard. I get it wrong a lot, too. So I believe you. Natsuki exhales in relief. She then sits down next to Yuri and takes the drink. Knowing Yuri, she was probably overthinking it so much that Natsuki's tepid response filled her with self-doubt. I'll do something nice for you next time. Please don't feel obligated. I want to. I want to do nice things, too. Okay. Thank you. You can thank me after I figure out how to do something nice. I'll do it, too, then. Natsuki sighs. Hmm? Nothing. Just reminds me of how I haven't been getting along with my friends lately. Is that why you've been coming here? Well, no, not exactly. I haven't been avoiding them on purpose or anything. They're just... Other things I'd rather be doing during lunch lately. I like being around them when they're all just having fun, but they also just can't take them serious. But they also just can't take anything seriously. So when I'm, I don't know, feeling serious, then their attitudes just really get on my nerves. It's only gotten worse ever since I joined the literature club. How come? I don't know. I feel like it used to be really good with just putting up with it because it would feel so stupid it cause drama over a joke I didn't like or something. But I just. I have a hard time doing that lately. But it's my fault for being overly sensitive. If I have a problem, I'm not going to demand for everyone around me to change. But... Yeah, I know. Monica and Sarah really don't agree with that kind of thing. But they're not in my position, so it's easy for them to say that you shouldn't just communicate your feelings or whatever. But it's not like my friend group does that kind of thing. I would just be making an embarrassment of myself. Sorry, none of this has anything to do with you. I don't know why I'm talking about it. It's okay. I like listening. What? Listen to other people's problems? Yes. <laughs> That's so weird. Sorry. I just like learning about people. Do you think it's weird? No, it's not weird. I probably just misunderstood, so... I need to blow my nose. Just a moment. Cut this out of the video. Or don't. I'm not your dad. I had like a tickle in my nose while speaking. <sighs> yeah. All right. Man, that was a nice, like, behind my fucking back shot. That was amazing. <clears throat> back in, baby. I don't know. Does that mean I should keep going? If you'd like. Okay. Well, I don't know what to talk about now. What are some things you like about your friends? A lot of things. I mean, they're really fun to hang out with, like after school on the weekends. And they really like my baking. And it's also fun to complain about school together. They make me laugh a lot. And we have a lot of good memories of inside jokes. Oh. I'm bad at a lot of those things. 
So? Are those all things that are important to you? Well, kind of, but they're not the things I need to get out of everybody. Everyone in the club is really different from that, but I'm still friends with them, too. Well, Surya like, really likes your baking, and she makes you laugh, and she complains a lot. That doesn't mean she's anything like my other friends. Well, unlike them, she's a nice person who cares about your feelings. Excuse me? How come... How about you don't talk about the way... How about you don't talk about my friends that way, that you don't know anything about them? Natsuki stands up. No, wait! I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. I didn't want to say something bad. Please don't leave. Natsuki sighs and shakes her head. It's fine. As long as you understand, you can't just judge people like that. I'm sorry. Natsuki sits back down. You can't just compare friends like that and like measure who's better than who. Everyone's different. I'm sorry. I just, I just don't like people who want to hurt you. A moment of silence stretches between them. <laughs> they don't want to hurt me. We just like to tease each other about stupid things. It's fun. I don't like that. Well, that's why I'm friends with them and you're not. You like it? Just don't worry so much about me. It's not worth it. I'm sorry. I wish I knew how to help with social conflicts. Like how Monica can. She's good at those things. Not really. Also, I don't always want help. Sometimes it's just stuff I have to deal with myself. That's what Monica and Siri never seem to understand. Sometimes all you do is look at them wrong and they're like, Oh, what's wrong? Is everything okay? I just want to mind my own business sometimes and decide myself if I want to talk about things. The only one who understands that is you. So you really shouldn't be so hard on yourself. You're not as bad as you think. Oh, you don't need to reassure me or anything. I mean that. Plus, it makes sense that someone who doesn't talk a lot would make a good listener. <laughs> Thank you. You're also nice. It's really hard for me. And as I come naturally at all. It's so weird because I've always thought of myself as someone who can just say whatever's on my mind. But I feel like it only works when I'm annoyed or upset or I want to say something mean. Why am I like that? I don't have to answer that. I'm just talking to myself. Yuri nods and remains silent. No, Natsuki notices her fidgeting with the pages of her book. How can you like reading so much? Oh, um, well, a lot of reasons, but I just... Get easily, I get sucked into it so easily. It's so immersive, like I want to be part of it. I think there are a lot of things about people in real life that make me feel uncomfortable or frustrated, especially when it comes to following social conventions and group interactions. I just don't really understand it, and I have no real desire to participate. But it's different with books. It feels like I always want to be around the characters. I feel such a strong emotional connection with them in ways that I've never felt with such be real people. So in that way, it can sometimes feel more real than real life. Really? It's that hard for you to be around people, like, all the time? <laughs> hmm, fairly often, especially in group settings. When people are all making all kinds of conversation and saying jokes and all of that, I don't know what to do, and I just disengage. Oh. That doesn't get lonely? I don't think so. I can still enjoy spending time with people one-on-one, -on -one, and I have online friends too, of course. Do you ever... Do you ever wish that you could be friends with the characters in your books? All the time? Sometimes so badly that it makes my heart ache. Yeah. Me too. Really? Mm-hmm. A lot. <laughs> Like, more than anything. After Natsuki mutters that, silence fills the stairwell once more. But it's mutual silence. One full of understanding. Oh shit, we're getting to that good shit. Oh shit, I started Doki Doki Literature Club, god damn it. Uh, hey everybody, remember the dance of auto good ending a bit? I'm so sorry. Anyway. 
<laughs> no, that's really good. It's a really good bit. Um, we're almost done now. Self love part two. It's really fucking good. Uh, I remember this one particularly well, so let's jump in. Also, I want to I want to say I apologize for all like the stumbling over and everything like that. Sometimes, and I'm sh- I don't know if other people have had this. I will read the thing slower than my brain wants to say it out loud like they are not in sync and my brain will just start trying to fill in gaps as i'm reading and usually when i'm all by myself that's fun it's fine i do it all the time with things like dank and rampa uh but since i'm doing it for youtube i know for some of you it might be annoying so i do deeply apologize um but yeah and sometimes that's why you should go the whole like oh all right let's try it again um so anyway i don't think i've ever actually said that so i want to say that now now that we're Almost done. Self-love part two. Here we go. Hey. Oh, hello. I almost thought you weren't coming today. Yeah, well. Lunch is already more than halfway over. Natsuki had typically been meeting Yuri in the stairwell much earlier, since it had been a good way of dodging her friends when she didn't feel like seeing them. Today, she only a large plastic container in both hands. I ran to my friends, so I hung up with them for a while. Is that so? Yeah. It was a, I was in a good mood today, so I figured I should. I hadn't seen them in a while, which I had to come up with an excuse for, but I expected that. Plus, I have way more of these that I know what to do with, so I figured I would share them too. She sits down, Natsuki opens the lid of her container. You make cupcakes. <laughs> you know it. It's been a good while at this point, so I figured it was about time again. You can take one if you want. Yuri takes her cupcake and carefully twirls it between her th- fingers. It's brown with dark green frosting, immaculately shaped to a floral pattern, and topped with some kind of glittery powder. How pretty. I just ate, so I might not be able to finish it. Are they for the club? Yeah, I guess so. I just didn't really think about it. I just made them. (sighs) I just thought that because green is Monica's favorite color, right? Well, yeah, but that's not really... Here he takes a small bite. This is green tea flavored. I love green tea. Oh, do you? It was just a random idea I wanted to try, so... (laughs) Don't laugh at me. I'm... I'm not. I just felt happy. Oh, sorry. Usually when... Never mind. What I mean is that I'm glad. Sorry for saying dumb things again. I just wanted to do something nice. And this is something I happen to be good at. So... And I want... I do want that... Wow! And I do know that you like them from past experience. Mm. Yuri turns red, recalling the time she treated herself rather generously to Natsuki's cupcakes. Ironically, her mouth is too full of cupcake for her to stammer any excuse, so she just settles for a disapproving look. How did you get into baking? Oh, well, I don't know, I just kind of always appealed to me. Well, a few years ago, I read this one manga with a lot of baking, so I got and I got like super into it for a while. I was probably making stuff almost every day. But it's something that I always knew I liked anyway. It's like baking is like an art, but when you get good at it, it gets more delicious too. I'm struggling to imagine myself putting my heart into something so artistic, knowing that it would just be eaten afterwards. <laughs> yeah, maybe you're too practical for it. I think I prefer to be on the receiving end. That's my other favorite part about it. It's something I can that I could do that makes a lot of other people happy. Like unconditionally everyone is always so thankful and the moment you get to be like the brainer of joy i don't know it just makes me feel valued yeah i guess that so you're able to make up with your friends today <laughs> hmm? there really wasn't anything to make up with them about we weren't fighting or anything you weren't maybe i misunderstood it only turns into fights if i lose my cool and that's just unnecessary drama it only makes things worse so They're not going to stop. I mean, it only happens sometimes anyway. It's just the way they are. I'm the one who's ever had a problem with it. It's not worth it. Especially since I have somewhere to go now when I don't feel like hanging out with them. Oh, I see. The cupcake's empty foil wrapper audibly crinkles as Yuri clenches a fist. I'm glad that the situation is resolved. That you don't have to avoid them anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. And I don't have to bother you during your alone time anymore. I'm sure you have a lot of reading to catch up on. Yeah. 
know that that cupcakes are basically nothing compared to all the stuff you've done for me. But it's the best I can do. So you can have the rest of them. Natsuki grabs the box and slides it over to Yuri's feet. Yuri stares at the box. Then she shakes her head and slides them back. You should save them for your other friends. But I made them for you. Natsuki's voice whines as she protests. I know. And I liked them very much, exactly as you thought. You succeeded. But I know you care about making your other friends happy too. And if this is the way you know how to make that happen, then I'm not going to take it from you. No, they were for making you happy. You make me happy. You're worth more than cupcakes to some people. That's why they want to spend time with you and be your friend. Without warning, tears pour from Natsuki's eyes. She pulls her ears up to her chest and starts sobbing into her arms. Natsuki! I'm such a bad person. Uh, um... Yuri stammers, feeling panicked. I didn't mean to say something bad. Natsuki shakes her head and wipes her eyes. You didn't. I just... Natsuki tries to choke back her sobs, but struggles to speak through them. I just really hate myself sometimes. And it feels so wrong when you say those nice things to me. Like I don't deserve it. I'm sorry. No, I am. I'm so difficult, and I can't... Think of a single thing about myself that anybody would like. And I hated myself for bothering you during lunch. And I just thought it was my chance to be a good person. Like, to be nice and do the things you wrote about in the letter. I knew if I tried in the club, Sir and Monica would be super annoying and make me a huge deal out of it. You know, I think a lot about those negative things too. About myself. <laughs> I never felt like a good person. I always scrutinize everything I say and later feel like I said it all the wrong things. And I just spend so much time thinking about myself, hating myself, and feel like everyone else must hate me too. So I understand some of that thought through my own experience. And that's why I want to write the letter and express my feelings. It pained me to see those things as someone else that I saw in myself. Natsuki sniffles. Yuri rustles through her bag and pulls out some tissues and hands them to Natsuki. Monica told me that it takes a good person to reflect on these things. The desire to improve yourself that makes you a good person. So, don't worry so much. Also, there are things about you that people would like, so... Like what? Like... Like how you're fun for people to be around. And you're not shy. You know how to make other people laugh. And you're very passionate about things. And you know how to take the lead. And you care a lot about other people. And just a lot of things. Oh. Well, now you're making me feel really embarrassed. Well, you're the one who asked. And you don't think I feel embarrassed? Nuski tries to hide a smile. Then she sighs as it fades again. Every time I come here, I always think that it's the last time, but then I keep coming back for some reason. Is that bad? Just really confusing. I mean, my friends and I go way back, so ditching them all the time feels like... I don't know. Feels like what? Natsuki's voice gets quiet. Maybe I'm scared they'll get mad at me. Hmm. I really don't know what to do. She pauses. Yuri stares into the distance, tracing her eyes along the patterns of the floor tiles while she thinks to herself. <laughs> what would you do, hypothetically, if your friends were happy for you instead of mad at you? Happy for what? Happy that your new club is making you happy. Well, that's just not a fair hypothetical. Natsuki says that, but with a little confidence in her voice. I always told myself that I don't really rely on the approval of others to be happy. And I still feel that way, but I'm spending time with people who put me down whenever I don't have their approval. That's probably what's making me so feel so confused. Because I'm threatened out of the things that should make me happy. So no matter what, it's like I have to be unhappy to be happy. It's making my head hurt. That must make it really difficult to feel comfortable with yourself. Being mad, made to feel like you were wrong just for being the person you are. It really goes against everything I believe in, doesn't it? 
It goes against the kind of person I want to be. I'm fed up with it. I'm fed up with a lot of things. Natsuki presses her palms to her forehead and shakes her head. I know what's best for me, but I keep convincing myself out of it. It's so much easier to be comfortably unhappy than it is to do something scary. To do what? You know, to end it. With them. Natsuki nods. I didn't think you were actively considering that as an option. I wasn't. Until recently. It was just one of those things where, like, it's been a certain way for so long that you just got used to it. Like, so much of you has gone into it, so much that it feels like that's how your life is. And throwing away is like throwing away such a big part of your life. It makes me feel sick to think about. Natsuki sighs again. It's just really scary. It's terrifying. What are you scared of? I don't know. A lot of things. Like being alone. Not having anyone to talk to or hang out with. Not being able to replace what I have with them. I don't want them to hate me. And I'm scared they'll hurt me for going against them. Physically? Not physically, but... Yuri clenches her fists. Natsuki. What? If anyone thinks to cause you harm... I will unleash hell upon them. Natsuki snorts in laughter. Don't laugh at me! Sorry, I was just... I liked that. That's all. Oh. Well, I meant it. I know you did. Natsuki gives Yuri an endearing look. I needed it. Mm -hmm. As the conversation lapses, Natsuki again slides her box of cupcakes over to Yuri. Just take them, okay? I don't... I don't want other people to have them anymore. Are you sure? Natsuki nods. I'm sure. I will, then. I'll enjoy them. Natsuki looks away, but a feeling of warmth spreads through her. She holds on to that feeling, knowing it will give her courage. <laughs> ah, you're here first today. Mm-hmm. And you brought reading material. Mm-hmm. Natsuki is in her usual spot, this time holding a volume manga while her lunch sits beside her. Yuri sits down as well, and opens her own book. It sucks when a good series has to come to an end. Like it's such a big part of your life, and then one day there's just nothing left. Makes you feel so empty. Unfortunately, I've had to experience that myself. I'm on the last book of this series. That sucks. But there's also something satisfying about letting a story conclude. I don't know if I'd ever want it to go on forever. Maybe. But there are some things that I wish could. On the other hand, have you ever read something that overstayed its welcome? Yeah, definitely. I think of at least one thing I've read that got pretty unbearable like halfway through, and the ending really sucked. So, it sucks when something good has to end, but it also sucks when they just keep inventing more plot until you don't like it anymore. I guess it sucks either way. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the nature of all things. They come to an end. The two fall silent. They slowly eat while making their way through their respective reading material. Except Natsuki doesn't seem to be touching her food at all. You don't go out during the weekends, right? Excuse me? Like with friends, at the mall or downtown or whatever. I'm not a total shut-in, you know. Oh, my bad for making assumptions. Well, I'm sure I go out less often than other people. Like you and the other club, I don't really meet with friends at, or, and arbitrarily spend time like that. I'm usually meeting with my board game group. This is what I was talking about at the start of the game, by the way. Yuri plays D&D. Confirmed. Yuri is a D&D player. Board game group? It doesn't matter. It's just more nerdy stuff. Board game! Fuck it, D&D! It's D&D, and you can't convince me otherwise. Why do you ask, anyway? I was just curious. I just realized that I couldn't picture it, so... I was just curious. Yuri looks at Natsuki and realizes she's shaking. Don't look at me like that. Sorry. Natsuki pulls her knees up to her chest and puts her head down. I can't take this. Did I do something? Yuri gets flustered, her mind racing over what she may have said or done. I did. I ended it. I texted them earlier, telling them. And then I just blocked them because I'm so afraid of their responses. And now it feels like I'm dying inside. 
Oh, that's... I'm sorry. Totally unsure of what to do. Yuri can barely find the words to... Uh, any words to support to offer. Meanwhile, the sounds of Natsuki unusually hard breathing fills the air. Then she speaks again, barely above a whisper. Help me. I feel sick and I want to hit my head against things. Please help. I can't take this. You may be having a panic attack. With that year realization, Yuri's demeanor suddenly changes. I... I have experience with this, so I will help you through it, okay? Natsuki meekly nods through her rapid breath, head still buried in her knees. Yuri slides herself over to Natsuki and sits on the step behind her. Then she puts her hands on Natsuki's shoulders. Can you feel my hands? Natsuki nods, her shaking becoming more and more apparent through Yuri's sense of touch. Yuri keeps her voice low and gentle. You're safe right now. You're in a good and safe place where nothing can hurt you. Natsuki nods once more. Although Yuri is only touching Natsuki's shoulders, she can practically feel her racing pulse through her, the base of her neck. We'll do a breathing exercise together. All you have to do is listen to my breaths and breathe along with me. Let's breathe in now. Yuri takes a deep, slow breath. Beneath her hands, she feels Natsuki's shoulders rise as Natsuki takes a breath of her own, trying to mimic Yuri. They exhale together, although Natsuki's breath shakes on her way out. That's good. Let's keep going. Yuri breathes in once more, and Natsuki joins her. They continue like that for a few more cycles while Yuri closely monitors. Eventually, Yuri feels Natsuki rest more of her weight into Yuri's palms. Let's focus on the physical world. All you have to do is focus on the feeling of your breaths going in and out. And the weight of my hands on your shoulders. You're in a safe and comfortable physical space. Minutes pass in silence. By now, the worst of it has passed, but Yuri is determined not to move away until Natsuki prompts her to. Meanwhile, Natsuki has lifted her head off her knees and her breathing has mostly steadied. Then she takes a final deep breath and slowly pulls herself to her feet, causing Yuri to let go. She stretches her arms. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to freak out. I don't know what my deal is. You don't have to apologize. It must be enormously stressful for you. Is that going to keep happening? It may, or it may not. We could take measures to help prevent it in the future. But I think naturally, we'll, it will get better over time. Natsuki motions to sit back down again, so Yuri moves over. Yuri turns away and picks up her book from the dusty floor. Which she had hastily set down earlier. She brushes the dust off the cover. I don't think I could have gotten through that alone. You're not alone. Feeling shy again, Yuri speaks in her own lap. From now on, you don't have to do anything alone. As she says that, Yuri tenses up. It's rare for her to be so openly it's rare for her to so openly share her thoughts. But something about Natsuki, of all people, makes it feel so much more natural to do so. Because people like Yuri, Natsuki because of people like Yuri. Natsuki is so timidly and uncertain, uh, timid and uncertain of herself. Natsuki does such a good job hiding it that it's taken a long time for Yuri to finally realize it. And because of that, Yuri is able to deliver the reassurance that she herself would have wanted. Demonstrating that you deserve the love of others. If you can accept that for the first time, then perhaps you can begin the tumultuous journey of learning to love yourself. This is also some good artwork. <laughs> Do you really mean that? You're probably going to regret saying that if you do. How so? Because I'm probably going to have a lot of free time during the weekends from now on. So you're going to. So you're giving me permission to be as annoying as I want and drag you around to a lot of places. I see. But you already said it, so you can't take it back now. Ah. Uh, well, I suppose I have no choice but to accept that responsibility then. Mm hmm. I know a good ice cream place. Oh, that means you'll finally figure out my favorite for ice cream flavor. Huh? What are you talking about? Oh, you don't remember. The first day you came into the club, you guessed everyone's favorite ice cream flavor. But you said for me, you had no idea. Seriously? I don't remember that at all. Oh, wait. Yes, I do. I said it was probably green tea. Yuri shakes her head. It's a good guess, but my favorite is usually to get chocolate and raspberry together. 
chocolate and raspberry? How fancy. How is that fancy? I don't know. I feel like I should have guessed something like that. Well, maybe next time I'll try chocolate and strawberry. Hey, strawberry's my favorite. Hmm. What a coincidence. I think it helps to have something to look forward to. I still have that sick feeling in my stomach. But it's easier now to convince myself that I did the right thing. Is there anything better I could be doing? Not that I know of. There's nothing that will make this easy for me. And you already did more than I thought anyone could. Mm -hmm. Come to think of it, we never talked about the letter you wrote. But I feel like we're way past that at this point. I don't even know what to talk about. Except that I think it helped me understand my needs a little bit better. The way I like to be treated. And the kinds of thing, the kinds of friends I want to have. And that's why I wanted to start coming here in the first place. Even though I was so scared of causing more problems. I thought... I thought it was a coincidence that you ran to meet you here initially. Oh, uh... Well, not exactly. What do you mean? Nothing. I... I may have tracked you down here first. With the help of Sayori. That's... But you said... I was shy, okay? I wasn't ready to, like... Whatever. You know what I'm saying. Well... I guess... I'm glad you worked up the courage. Even if it was in your own way. I can tell you've been making a lot of difficult decisions. It's brave. And it'll make things better in the long run. I think anyone would be proud of you for it. Anyone? You mean... Like you? Yes. Like me. You know... I could get used to this. As long as... As long as you don't tease me too much. Fine. Just a little then. That's fine. I know how uncertain everything feels for you right now. But I really do think like that doing good things are in the store. Those are my honest feelings. Thanks. It feels nice to be reassured. The two girls continue their conversation through the remainder of lunch. But a new feeling hangs in the air, a feeling of great un greater uncertainty in their path forward. In just a few hours, there will be another Lurch Club meeting, where the four club members will happily spend time together. Each of them, all with their own special qualities, have something unique that they can deliver to one another. Through friendship and literature, the club members will continue to grow and find new happiness together. The end of each chapter is the start of the next. Yuri thinks to herself. She says she's about to finish her long-running series. It would be best to have a new book lined up. Perhaps this week it would be a good time to visit the bookstore. Together. Pretty sure that's the first of the side stories to end on the new CG cutscene. That was cute. Also, more mail. Ah, fuck the mail. <laughs> and obviously more pictures. We got the new say Yuri wallpaper. Very cute. Very nice. Um, let's see. Any new poems or any new... We got new screenshots, obviously. Bunch of cuties. Oh, and we got the CG for the stairwell. It's really nice, actually. Oh, I love this one. Promotional artwork for uh, Monica's birthday in 2019. So cute. Oh, and because it is October, Spooky Games Month. Well, hey, you know what? The mega episode of all episode. We also have equals. Dare we push this episode to the maximum? I was going to start lining these videos up to come out for the rest of the month, but you know, man. Okay, everyone. We're going to be taking a break from our usual activities today. I was thinking since people are starting to talk about the festival, it's a good time for us to go over the general direction of the club and all that. I think it'll help us figure out what to do for the festival, you know? Oh, Sarah and I already came up with a really good plan. Really? For the festival? Yeah, so the plan is this, okay? You and Yuri collect information ahead of time on which clubs and classes are doing food booths. Then, we take a map and plan the most effective route so we can get the most of them each before the lines get too long. Hey, that has nothing to do with a club. 
Well, you have to let me finish. All right, fine, go ahead. Right, so basically we get all the food we can and we come back here and we eat it together. That's all. Wow, I got tricked twice by the same joke. Boo, don't be a hater. So I can go with anything better. Look, you mean Yuri was thinking about it. No, I wasn't. I would really prefer to do something literature related. We can eat together anytime. The festival is a unique opportunity. Besides, it's been quite a while since we've seen any new interest in the club. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. We got really, sh we really got a shot. <laughs> We're back here again, I see. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. We really got a shot at showing people what the literature club is all about. I'll tell you what, we can do both, right? We'll make time for your food mission and still put together a public event. Oh my gosh, yes. I was just joking, but that's a really good idea. <laughs> well, I'm glad that's settled. I think the question is, how do we come up with an event that demonstrates everything we can get out of the literature club? Well, it's kind of tough because everyone gets something different out of the club. Okay, how about this? Let's go around and have each of us talk about what we've gotten out of the club so far. It could really help us figure out what kind of reputation we want to build. Yeah, that's too embarrassing. No, oh, but you have so much to talk about. That's exactly why. And I'm sure Natsuki feels the same way. Well, maybe, but I didn't plan on arguing against or anything. I mean, it's the literature club. We can talk about stuff together, right? And the only way to get more comfortable with it is to suck it up and do it. Oh, you're not wrong. I'm sorry for being so resistant. It's not good to say suck it up because it sounds like your feelings don't matter. Right, my bad. Just a habit I need to break. Well, anyway, who's going to start? I'll start. I was the first to join, after all. <laughs> Wouldn't that be me? No, I want to go first. Fine, fine. You can start. I don't mind. Yay! So... Gosh, it feels like so long ago. I think I joined because I wanted to have fun sharing poems with people. It seemed like it would be a safe way to express myself. You know, like if it's just a poem, then we can share it without feeling like I'm burdening everyone with my problems. I thought it'd be a really good way to get to know each other people too. So yeah, I was really surprised when I walked in and it was just Monica. And she was sleeping. No, oh, don't remind me of that. Oh gosh. <laughs> Yeah, but it seemed like so much fun to help start a new club, especially since writing helps so me so much. I want to see if I could help other people too. But it ended up being me who was inspired, because I remember feeling like Monica was so sweet and mature that I could trust her with anything. It made me feel a lot less alone, having someone who knew even the bad things about me. And at that point, I knew the literature club was going to be special for a lot of people. Yeah, I felt the same way. It really helped me give uh, give the club a lot more of a cohesive vision. Yeah, and then Yuri joined, but she was so different from us, and Natsuki too. I think for Yuri, it really helped me to take the lead before I was able to open up a little bit. But Natsuki was kind of the opposite, where she wasn't ready to get really close to someone really quickly. I never thought about that sort of thing. I really feel like I've gotten better at understanding people's different needs. And it makes me really happy, because my friends are just the most important thing to me. And whatever new members we get, I want to help them in those ways, too. I don't know if I would have continued coming to this club if it weren't for you. Really? Mm-hmm. I know it wasn't too long ago, but it hurts to think about my behavior back then. I was really short-sighted. The only reason I came was to find other people who were into fantasy. I suppose that was my idea of making friends with people. I remember feeling uncomfortable because you and I have such different energy. I had such a specific idea of the kind of person I could be with friends, uh, be friends with. So when Siri tried so hard to get to know me, I felt like I was just wasting her time. I think I was naive to assume that similar interests were the key component of friendship. Siri and I were able to be friends because she always thinks about the needs of other people. That's something I never knew how to do, or even thought to do. But I stayed in the club, thanks to that, and I started trying as hard as I could to understand better pe people better. You really went above and beyond when it came to that. I was super impressed. Well, I always hated that I didn't know how hard, how to behave like a person who was easily liked by others, like the two of you can. And because of that, I spent so much time thinking about my own behavior and all the wrong things I said. But the whole time, I should have been thinking about the other people instead of my, instead, not just myself. Once I started doing that, I was able to make friends with, well, everyone else. 
Oh, also, I discovered that sometimes I'm better a communicator when I take time to write rather than speak. It's so strange the way things turned out. It's so far different from anything I ever would have expected. But I'm happy. I suppose we don't always know what we really need. Oh my gosh, you're so cute that I think I'm going to throw up. Okay, please don't do that, Sayori. Besides, I'm not cute. Hey, isn't that my line? Oh, well, for me, it's actually true, so... What are you saying? Nothing. I finished my part, so somebody else take their turn. My heart. Sayori takes some deep breaths. Okay, fine, I'll go. Yuri, I can't believe you were complaining about doing this and still went before me. What a show off. I was just following up on Sayori. It was the easiest way to get it over with. Besides, you left the most important thing you to get that you got out of this club. I did? Yeah, a regular supply of your favorite cupcakes. Oh no, I forgot that too. I'm a traitor to the cupcake queen. Neither of you are forgiven. Looks like only Monica will be getting cupcakes next time. No! I can't eat that many cupcakes. Yeah, true. Only Yuri can. Hey! <laughs> well, anyway, I'm just putting off talking. It's kind of hard to talk about this stuff, but I guess what it comes down to is that I'm in a much better place mentally than I was when I first joined. And that's because everyone helped me realize that I had some really toxic friendships going on outside the club. It was honestly a really painful thing to go through, having to cut them out. It still hurts to think about. I'm sorry, Natsuki. It's fine. I knew it was for the best and I was right. I guess it, for me, it's all about feelings. I was only ever ridiculed for feeling, for having feelings, so I thought the right thing to do was just ignore them. It took me a really long time to realize that's not really how things are supposed to work. And I guess that's thanks to everyone who took the time to respect my feelings, even though I was being like the biggest jerk. I'm really sorry for being such a jerk to everyone. I really was the worst. Natsuki's voice chokes a little. We love you, Natsuki. I just hate that I was like that. Everyone did so much for me, and I could never do anything in return. That's not true, Natsuki. You've done a lot more than you think. This club really wouldn't have been the same without you. I mean that. Remember how judgmental I was when you first showed up? It was like I couldn't accept anything other than my own idea of what Literature Club was supposed to be. Apparently, that was more important to me than the opportunity to bring you some happiness. You really taught me that anything that makes anyone, someone happy is worthy of respect. You even inspired me to start playing piano. That's something that means a whole lot to me. So there's no need to put yourself down. Okay. Natsuki wipes her eyes. You helped me a lot too. It's so much fun to have you around. You helped me become a better person. Having a problem doesn't make you needy or inconvenient. It means that there's something that everybody needs to be better for you. You, you always deserve that. I agree. Seeing us uh, that have some of the same struggles made me a better person as well. I wouldn't want to change anything about our time here. I don't think any of us would. Sorry, I got all dramatic again. That's always what I... Uh, that's all I wanted to say, so Monica can go now. There's no need to apologize. It's always, It was something that I want to talk about, anyway, because it made a big difference for me. I was always such a strict perfectionist who never took enough time to believe in the best of other people. But everyone kept proving me wrong. I made the mistake multiple times thinking that my way was the best for everyone. Or thinking that I would need to solve other people's problems. <laughs> but I think being a leader means that you have to acknowledge that you're not perfect. And the best thing you can do is to help guide people rather than do everything for them. We're all good people. We're all equals. I think that's the most important thing I've gotten out of the club. Realizing what that really meant. Sayori, what are you doing? I just thought that we, I should be writing some of these things down. Things that about the club that are really valuable to us. With a piece of chalk in her hand, Sari writes the word trust on the chalkboard. This is because you've shown me that I could trust you with everything about me, not just at my, my good side. Suddenly, Yuri takes a piece of chalk as well. She writes understanding. I, I owe you a lot of gratitude to everyone who took the time to understand me, even though I was so difficult to express myself. In that case, Monica takes the piece of chalk as well and writes the word respect. I always thought I was a respectful person, but it took the club for me to realize that there was more to it than I thought, and I'm a better person because of it. I 
have another one. So he writes, balance. Sometimes people want different things out of a friendship, and they need time before they're ready to come close. So it's important to keep things balanced between you and the other person. That reminds me. Yuri writes, reflection. I've always been a reflective person, but most of it has been nothing more than hating myself for all the things I thought I did wrong. Once I started reflecting on other people, and not just myself, a lot of things changed for me. So I think that's the most important one for me. That's great. We have a whole list of things now. Suddenly everyone looks at Natsuki. Well, everyone took the chalk. Don't look at me like that. Jeez. You could have just asked. Monica hands a piece of chalk to Natsuki. Then Natsuki writes the word, writes self-love. I don't know how far I've gotten with it yet, but it feels like things are at least on the right track. So that's my contribution. Together, everyone stares at the words on the board. Wasn't this club supposed to be about literature? It is. We still do a lot of literature. Friendship and literature. Yeah, you're right. Friendship and literature. Natsuki and Yuri gently nod as well. Hey, let's all take a picture together. We don't have one yet, right? Hey, you're right. Make sure you send it to me after. Wait, can I brush my hair first or something? Oh, you're fine. You already have the best hair out of all of us. Mm -hmm. Everyone get together so I, I can't fit you all in. Okay. Okay, everyone ready? And click. I'm really glad we talked about this stuff. It's easy to forget how far we've come with only four members. Yeah, I've gotten so many happy thoughts right now. I'm getting, I'm getting some really good inspiration for a poem. You know, I feel the same way. I kind of want to get some writing done. Me too. I think I would like that as well. Everyone's looking at me again. I'll do it too, but I might not feel like sharing it. That's okay. The four members of the Literature Club disperse and return to their desks, each equipping themselves with a pen. Natsuki and Yuri give each other a quick glance, then start writing immediately. Sayori stretches, then does the same. But Monica's left tapping her pen against the paper, unsure of where to start. Just move your hand. Monica mouths to herself. Write the way into your heart. Her mind full of thoughts, memories, and inspiration, Monica navigates past her mental barriers and begins to write. It doesn't matter what, just that it's something new. And would you look at that? Baby episode for a bit. This might actually have gotten tacked on to the, the Megasode. You know what? It got tacked on to the Megasode because that, yeah. God, that was really fucking good. Look at them cuties. Look at all those fucking cuties. Look at that cutie. I like that cutie a lot. I especially like that cutie the best. I just want to let this play out now, man. This is so good. Thank you all so much for joining me, playing Doki Doki Literature Club. I made the joke, uh, again, in the mega so this, uh, this is a separate recording session, by the way, but I made the joke that, like, uh, this was supposed to be staggered out over the course of, like, three, three videos, but, like, goddamn, it's all so good, and I wanted to just do it all. And I'm so excited, because now I get to do the Doki Doki Literature Club review for the Raptor Reviews uh, channel. So gear up for that. That's gonna hopefully be getting done before Halloween. I think it's gonna be the Halloween video this year. And God, it's just so good. So, so, so good.
Look at them. Look at those cuties. I love them. And that's it. But there's one more picture that the game didn't show. The most important picture. Everyone say cheese. And the blooper version. So cute. Look at them. Cute. That's it for Doki Doki Literature Club Plus. Uh, God. I remember, and I do still th feel this way, at least in a certain respect, right? Doki Doki Literature Club is so good. And I felt like the plus, and again, I do feel the same way of the worst thing I can say about the plus side stories is top to bottom, depending on your perspective, it's fan fiction, which is not a bad thing. The only complaint I have about it is it is phenomenal visual novel stuff, but it's not horror anymore. And again, depending on perspective, that's a deal breaker because these are horror games. So, yeah, depending on your perspective, plus might not necessarily be right for you, especially if you like DDLC as a horror game. But if you like DDLC as just a game, like, God, you you get so much out of plus. And that's not even all of it. There's still more uh, mail and the music and everything like that. Uh, did we have any other pictures to unlock? We've got most of them. The only thing left to really get is... The last of the secret poems and the rat last of the sketches. Unfortunately, no real way to see how to unlock those. Oh, and the promo art, of course. But no, man, it's so good. So well done. I love it all very, very much. And I'm glad you all enjoyed it as well. So thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Check back for the rest of October for more spooky games. At the end of the month, you should be seeing the review for Doki Doki Literature Club. I'm very excited about that one. But anyway, thank you so much. Take care, everybody.